You can build a marketing empire without relying on your traditional education on today's episode. Today's episode is brought to you by Thrivecart. Need a shopping cart but don't want to pay monthly fees? Thrivecart is the perfect place to start your journey. When they first started, I didn't think they'd go the distance. Now I have an account. Yes, I've got egg on my face. See how easy Thrivecart makes it to sell digital products? Servemaster.com slash Thrivecart. Are you tired of dealing with your boss? Do you feel underpaid and underappreciated? If you want to make it online, fire your boss and start living your retirement dreams now. Then you've come to the right place. Welcome to Serve No Master Podcast, where you'll learn how to open new revenue streams and make money while you sleep. Presented live from a tropical island in the South Pacific by best-selling author Jonathan Green. Now, here's your host. Today we have a very special guest, Keaton Nelson. I'm really excited to spend some time with him. He has an amazing journey starting off really just the hardest way you can imagine with no money in his pocket and just out there grinding and showing what's possible when you just put a little bit of sweat out, equity out there. So I'm really excited to hear about this. And I'd love to hear how your journey started, Keaton. I'm so excited to spend some time together. Yeah, thank you so much for having me on. Where do I start, right? So uh, I think two years ago, it's a good place, two and a half years ago, I was working at Red Robin uh, waiting tables. And uh, I was I was going through like my management training. I was I thought that was going to be the best way to provide for my family. I'd have a steady salary, a couple weeks of vacation, and maybe some health benefits. And uh, I turned 26, and I had like this like quarter life crisis. And I realized that. Well, I asked myself, do I want to do this for the rest of my life? And the answer was clearly no. And then I asked, like, do I want to do it for the next five years? And I was like, no. I was like, so then why am I doing this? And so that kind of led me down a path of like wondering what I should be doing. And I didn't really have an answer. I knew that I was, you know, $50,000 in student loan debt. I went to school for jazz composition that I, that wasn't going to pay for, um, for much, you know? And then I, I tried real estate. I tried other online ventures, um, online businesses and, failed at all of them basically just because I quit. Right. So I ended up praying for like three days straight, like six, seven, eight times a day and would say that like, if you just give me an idea that's going to provide for my family, pay off the student loan debt and give me the freedom to do what I want. I promise I won't quit no matter how hard it gets. And then when I succeed, I'll tell everyone that you gave me the idea. And uh, that idea was to go manage social media for, for a bunch of different businesses. And yeah, that's how I started. Really interesting. You know, there's a lot of stuff about college education and how crazy the prices are exploding. Like the company in America with the most money in the bank right now is Harvard. They have $54 billion just in cash and a checking account, which is more than Apple, more than Tesla, more than any other company. When you think of the biggest companies in the world. And number two is, I think it's Yale. It's another school. <laughs> like the top 10 companies with the most money in the bank are all schools. And yet they charge these really intense tuitions. Like I thought when I went to school 20 years ago, tuition was high. And now it's like three times higher. The numbers are just like constantly accelerating. And it's very interesting because people go to college, when you think of like jazz composition, that's not a high income career unless you get into, I guess, movie scoring, right? Like it's really hard to make big money. And yet they charge you the same tuition as everyone else, don't they? Yep. Yep, exactly. Um, I wouldn't say it's a waste of my time because I wanted to be doing it. Right. Um, but what I realized was that I could have just went to these professors and paid them $60 an hour and asked them to teach me what I wanted to learn instead of, um, learning whatever the curriculum was. Um, and yeah, I, I wish I went about it that way to get the same education or a better one it would have been a lot less expensive. Yeah, it's just so interesting because when you think of most of the great jazz musicians, most great musicians didn't go to school for it. And yet they're still charging college level tuitions. I guess it's a lot of things. I've certainly met people who have social media degrees and are not any good at social media. So it it's is true. interesting that we all start from that place. It's like we start at like zero when we're 18. And then instead of like building up, we're going down. And we're like, now we're a little bit behind, a little bit more, a little bit behind. And some people are paying off their college tuition in their 60s. I think one to 4% of people went to college are still paying off that off 40 years later. Like that's a really tough deal. And that's of course people that were paying what the prices were 40 years ago. So I can only imagine how it's gonna get going forward. 
So you're in this situation where I guess you're at your breaking point. And that's, I think it's a point everyone reaches, isn't it? Where you have to make that decision of whether you're going to jump or not, because it's not a soft transition to go from the security of a job, right? Yeah, you don't love the job, but you have health insurance, which is like this big thing in America, right? We're always told like, oh, the benefits are worth more than the job. It's like, there's this constant threat that something horrible is going to happen to you. <laughs> like if you don't have insurance, you're going to get hurt, especially if you have a kid. I know that can like double the situation. I have four kids. And so probably 25% of my income goes towards medical bills. There's just always something when you have lots of kids. And so I know that pressure. So it must have been like a really tough moment. What was that moment like when you go, I have to give up this security for the possibility? And that's the trade-off I think most people see it as, even though how many people in the restaurant industry lost their jobs in the last few years? Turns out security is not that real. Yeah, um, that's a great question. And it, was a, it was a transition. It wasn't like overnight. Right. So what ended up happening is it was beginning of 2022. So I turned or 2020. So right before the pandemic was like a real big thing. Um, I was working at Red Robin, turned 26 in, into January. And then I decided I was going to go for this thing. I uh, played with the idea, started an Instagram account for my business, quote unquote, business at the time. Right. Had any customers. It was a hobby to post on social media for it. And I finally said, you know what, screw it. I'm going to at least give this a real shot and go try and make some sales for this thing. And um, I, I was broke. I was dead broke. You know, I, I had 32 bucks in my bank account and I went and spent 27 of those $32 on flyers to say that I'll manage your social media for you. Right. Um, and I printed out about 50 of them. It was funny. It didn't even fit on the page. Right. It, <laughs> it literally... I printed them out and then I had to go home and cut with scissors the edges off of it. So it, it looked nice. It took me about like two or three hours just to do that. And I, I had a two year, two year old daughter at the time. Uh, now she's five, but, um, I went and I passed those things out to a bunch of businesses and didn't hear anything for a couple of days. And I finally got a ring and, but I, I thought it was, it was like an out of state number. I thought it was like a scam call or a bill collector or something. And, uh, <laughs> I got the voicemail. It's like, Hey, yeah, uh, your my manager said you, you want to manage, manage our social media. Like, you know, I ended up calling him back and he said he had someone that was already doing it for him for X amount of dollars a month and that he wasn't doing the job that they wanted them to do. So I said, Hey, I'll do it for less and I'll do everything that they're not doing plus everything they're doing right now. Pretty easy sale. But what I did was I over delivered, did a great job for him. And that turned into a referral, which turned into another referral then just exponentially grew from there. And I was still waiting tables. Uh, I was waiting. I was doing less. Um, and then I stopped working at Red Robin and everything kind of shut down as it was, um, it was COVID, right? I came back, I think at, at the end of March or something like that, when things started to open back up, at least a little bit. And so I was waiting table like at Red Robin and this other place called the Safe House, a little bit higher end, so making a little bit more money. But my business was starting to pick up. And I say pick up, it was doing maybe like two, three thousand dollars a month. Um, but it was nice because I only had to work a few hours a week to to manage it, and I was making all this money waiting tables. But what I ended up doing was I was I was in like the kitchen, and I'd go <laughs> be taking sales calls and calls from my clients out back, and. People I was working for did not like that. And I actually ended up getting fired a couple months down the road. And I was like, you know, I could either freak out or and then go and try and get another job, waiting tables, which I certainly could do. Or I could just take this as um, my opportunity to go all for it. And at the time, I wasn't making enough money to provide for my family that way. But I said, screw it, I'm going to do it and uh, kind of built the plane on the way down, as they say, right? Yeah, most people wouldn't take the leap at that moment, right? They want to wait until they have a buffer built up and like that little bit of breathing room. And some people, it's interesting, they have a huge buffer and they still hesitate to take the leap because I think there is something unique about people that want to be in the arena, in on the field, like the one who's in the game instead of just having the security of someone else make the decisions and you just ride with them as an employee. So... What's interesting, I think most people, the biggest hurdle is zero to one. It's either zero to the first client or zero to the first dollar online because it goes from, I think I can do this to, okay, someone will pay me to do this. It's such a confirmation of belief. 
And the sooner it happens from when you start, like the more like you are to stick around. Because if it takes like six months to get that first client, it's hard to stay the course. It took me four days to get my first client. I was posting ads on Craigslist. So very similar idea. I made like a cool flyer. It was just a digital flyer. And I was just grinding Craigslist. And it really worked for me because I go, people on Craigslist are here to buy. It's not mm-hmm. like research like Google or anywhere else. And I just really went well for me. And this is, of course, 10 years before you were doing that. But it's the same idea is that you just have to be willing to put yourself out there a little bit. But it's that the first client, the idea is like, well, I don't really know what's going to happen. I don't know what to charge. I don't know what to deliver. And it can be very scary because you're not sure if you're going to do a good job because you've never done it before. So there is this feeling of like stepping out. What would you say to people that are kind of in that spot where like, oh, I want to get my first client, but I'm not sure if I can do a good enough job? Yeah. So I, I always say start before you're ready. I still do this in my business now, right? Like I'll hire the employee before we can afford them. I'll, um, I'll go and buy a software before we can afford it. I'll go buy the office space and the, the, the hardware, the phones that we need to before we can really support it with our revenue. Uh, and it, same thing when you're starting, just go ahead and do it. Uh, and it, you should pick up the book, The Alchemist. It's really, really good. And it's great for anyone who's starting a journey like this. And the reason is uh, it talks about a, a, it's a story about a kid who used to be a shepherd and he's discovering his personal journey, his uh, personal destiny, right? And the idea is that when you make the decision, an actual decision, which by the way, decide means to cut off from all other options, um, you make a decision to go up towards your, your personal journey, the universe conspires in your favor, right? And I love that. And I, I found it to be so true that every single time that I'm pushed against the wall or like I'm afraid that it won't work, that's the time when I know that like I should just give it a shot. And what I tell myself is what I said in the beginning. If it doesn't work out, at least I know I tried. Right? Because you're going to end up in the same place either way. Or you're going to end up where you want to be. It can be tough when you're in a family situation. Like I find that when people are younger, I was lucky enough that I was single. I had no kids. I had no responsibility. So I moved back into my mom's basement for my first year. Then I lived on my friend's couch for my second year in business. But when you have that conversation, when you come home and go, hey, I just lost my job. I'm going to go all in on this. What was that conversation like? Oh, that's good. Yeah, I want to point out that um, I did have a two-year-old daughter. We were living in a tiny two-bedroom in a crappy part of town. And in April, we found out that we, she was pregnant with my second, which is about the time where I lost my job, right? So there's a lot going on here. Um, I came home and... I let her know I lost my job and I basically said that if you believe in me, it will pay off. <laughs> right? I said, if you just you stick with me, support me through this, um, it's, it's going to pay off. Right. And I am not sure she was going to school for nursing and waiting tables on the weekends at a breakfast place. So she wasn't making a ton of money either, maybe 200 bucks a week, two, 300 bucks a week. Certainly not enough to support a family, right? Um, and we, she, she really, I, I think I'm very lucky to have this partner. And, and that's probably the biggest decisions that people overlook is the partner that you're going to spend your time with, you know, for the rest of your life. Uh, that person needs to be able to support you. And, and you guys have to work together because, I mean, I couldn't have done it without her. There's another time where... You know, I had to rebuild an entire website because an affiliate was going to send out a message to um, 80,000 people on their email list. And it was literally like the last like $300 in my bank account and rent was coming up next week. (laughs) Like, and she said, I was like, listen, I don't know how we're going to pay rent, but if this thing works, it's going to work out great. And, um, but this is the situation. And she said, just go and do it. Right. Like I probably wouldn't have done it if I didn't have her support. Luckily, the next day I had like 50 hot leads and people paying me without even getting me on a phone call, which was it was a group. It's a, what I say. The universe is conspiring in your favor when you're actually you're making the decision to make that first step. 
Um, so yeah, the conversation was, I, I was lucky, right? I, I don't know if everyone has that partner, but I, I think it might be a, a flag to look at who you're with and, or have a conversation with them, an honest conversation about what, what you're really looking for. Yeah, I know a lot of people that on both sides where they have a really supportive partner, like they have this amazing success. And when the partner is like really, and it depends like how much you either lean towards risk and like the possibility of greatness versus security. Mm -hmm. So I know people who like, you know, their partner like says one thing and then they start having kids and it really shifts, which it can happen, right? We all feel that way. I couldn't do the things now that I was doing 10 years ago. I got four kids. It's a whole different ball game. You know, I would mm -hmm. never do, I could never go back. I can't go back 12 or 13 years in my career because I have so much more responsibility. Now there's like school bills and diapers for one kid and other kid needs a new Taekwondo uniform. There's always something. So it's very different. But yeah, it can be so critical. I think a lot of people overlook that when they're kind of choosing, you know, like they're saying is like the guy marries the first woman who wants to, who says yes after he decides he's ready to get married. Like there's that age where it's different for each of us, but it is really important to kind of think about building your business as there's, you do have a partner, you do have your family when people rely on you that the decisions we make do affect them. So that's pretty big, like to risk the rent money on a big deal. You know, I'm in a situation, my wife doesn't really understand what I do. She knows I go into the office and magic happens, but she wasn't there from the beginning of the journey. I was already doing this way, Matt. So it's a little different, but it can be really trepidatious, especially for people that are thinking about starting it older in life, right? There could be so many elements that are intimidating. Like, oh, I have to master every social media platform, every single tool, every technique. And there's this feeling of like, oh, I have to learn everything if I want to build an online business. And there are so many different ways to make money online that for some reason, they're all grouped into the same category. Like everyone who, like a social media person and a dropshipper are not similar other than they, they happen to both use a computer. And yet we've all, all fall into that same category and it can be, make you feel, oh, I got to learn everything that everyone does. So how do you kind of narrow your focus so that you only deliver one type of product so you don't start expanding? Because there's this temptation when you're doing services that you're like, hey, you know what? We'll handle your email marketing. We'll handle your website. We'll, we'll start doing web development for you. We'll start building your app. We'll start doing SMS marketing. We'll start doing SEO. We'll start doing paid advertising. Yeah, we'll do Facebook ads. And you start to do this mission creep where you expand beyond your ability to deliver, but you just kept thinking, oh, this client, I can just get a bigger and bigger paycheck from each client. That is a great point. Um, so in thinking grow rich and talk about specialized knowledge, right. And how important specialized knowledge is compared to generalized knowledge. Um, and that's a great, I think it's chapter five. Definitely go and read that just that one chapter. If you're, you're worried about that. But for me, it was, I knew that I wasn't going to be great at everything first off. Right. So I picked at the beginning, I started off with just Instagram and Facebook. And I, those were the only two platforms that I did. And I said that we're only going to do organic content. Right. And those things did come up. Can you do my email marketing? Can you do my paid ads? Can you uh, manage my Google, my business? Can you do some, uh, make sure my reviews look good. And I, in the beginning, you kind of do have to say yes to everything until you get so busy they can say no to things. And I do believe in that, but you, you're towing a fine line once you are approaching like your max capacity. And what I did is I, I got up there and it was really easy for me to say no eventually. Cause I just knew that I didn't want to do that, but what gets really exciting is when you don't do everything is that you can partner with people that are really, really good at what they do. And that's where the, like, honestly, that's when your, your business starts to explode is when you, you don't do email marketing, but you find someone who's amazing at it and you can go and say, Hey, I've got 50 clients that need email marketing. I don't do it. Let me send them to you and you can send me a referral fee. And then they have 50 clients that need social media and they don't do social media and they send them to you. Now you guys have, let's say 50% of them convert because they trust you. Now you have, you both have 75 clients. Then you find someone who does paid ads. It's amazing at it. And then like those things start to spiral and those types of relationships, I mean, they become friendships. They become um, just things that skyrocket your business and opportunities to travel and do things with people that you never thought you would be able to. That's been like the biggest reward from starting the business. I travel about once a month 
all over the United States to, to go to different seminars and masterminds now that I never could have dreamed of and working with some very, very high level people. Um, so that's what I, I definitely steer away from generalizing yourself as big as you can online, get really, really good at one thing and find other people to do the other things. And it'll make your job a lot easier and you can charge more for what you do because you're only, you're good at that one part. And I just want to touch on this really quickly, if it's okay, Jonathan, is that people, th I think before they start, or like when I started, I didn't realize how easy it actually is to make a, a living on online. To make $6,000 a month is like two clients paying you three grand a month. And all you have to do is provide more value than three grand to that client. It's not that hard when you're serving other businesses or like just to replace someone's income of like 70 grand a year. It's, it's, it's so much easier than people think. Awesome. So this has been a really cool conversation. Where can people find out more about what you're doing, see what you're up to online and maybe start following you? Yeah. So I'm at the Keaton Nelson show everywhere. YouTube. I have my own podcast. Uh, you'll see episodes there, a bunch of YouTube shorts, uh, Instagram, TikTok. Uh, you can find me on Facebook. I'm everywhere. LinkedIn. Type in the Keaton Nelson show. I'm sure you will find me. Awesome. And I'll put the links to everything in the show notes and below the video on YouTube. Thank you so much for being here today. This was awesome. Yeah, you got it. Thanks, Jonathan. Thank you for listening to the Serve Master Podcast. Get a free copy of my bestseller, Fire Your Boss, right now on Amazon. Go to servermaster.com forward slash get fire or just search Fire Your Boss on Amazon. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of the Serve No Master Podcast. Make sure you subscribe so you never miss another episode. We'll be back next week with more tips and tactics on how to escape the rat race. Please take a moment to leave a review at servenomaster.com forward slash iTunes. It helps the show grow and more listeners means more content for you. Thanks again, and we'll see you next week.